everybody. It's Kathy. Welcome to Team Snap. Jerome first in the gate. <laughs> hey, Jerome. I didn't know if you see me answer you in the chat there, but I was asking you, uh, you like the flowers, huh? You like the azaleas? Hometown vibe, North Carolina State flower. We have an azalea festival. I'm originally from Wilmington, North Carolina, and it's just so beautiful there. And those pictures were taken back home from a friend, and I asked her permission to use her um, picture, and she said, anytime. And I'm like, okay. So, Jerome, are you here in the fort? Are you here in Fort Wayne? Hello? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Well, I hope so. Anyway, it says you can. <laughs> oh, you're from Texas. Okay, because the mayor of Fort Wayne, Tom Henry, just passed away. Very sad, sad story. Very good man. And his wife had just passed away in January from cancer. And then he announced to us, like the end of February, that he had been diagnosed with stomach cancer end stage and it didn't look good and bam two weeks later he's you know three weeks later and he's gone so i was just wondering if you were hey shelly i was just wondering if you were related if you were i'll send my condolences because he was a very good man and it's kind of funny i got a story about mayor henry i ran for office i ran for city council at large back in 2016 and uh or 2015 to be 16 and um, I, I had met him. I, I met him. And, of course, you know, we get it to the, I'm a Democrat. Y'all know that. Um, and so, meet it, I, you know, met with him at some of the meetings and stuff like that. And he was getting to know everybody. And, and um, he says to me, he goes, what's your last name again? I said, Cross. He says, K? I'm like, no, C-R-O-S-S. I says, oh, he says, oh, okay. All right, well, good luck, huh? Good luck. I'm like, thank you, thank you. And then a <laughs> friend, Sharon Tucker, who was running for city council herself, or she was running for county council at that time, she says, uh, she says, you know why I asked you that, didn't you? Don't you? I said, well, not really. She goes, he wanted to know where you were going to be on the ballot, if you were going to be above Michelle Chambers or below Michelle Chambers. <laughs> I said, he's clever. And he, sure enough, I was right behind her in the vote, and she won, and that's fine. But there was like three, three open seats on city council at large, and she got the third seat. And I almost had the third seat. But anyway, that's my funny story about Mayor Henry. He was clever as a fox. Clever as a fox. Anyway, the point of the video is I have made some purchases I wanted to review for you guys. And these were from Dollar Tree. And I got one. I just want to show you I got a Dollar General. But these. The Gentle Skin Cleanser. And the moisturizing lotion that you compare to Cetaphil from Dollar Tree. And I have to tell you, you know, I got that old lady crepey skin, right? It's terrible. It looks like alligator skin sometimes. But I want to tell you, this is very light. It's very light. It's very thin. It goes on good, nice and smooth. But I want to tell you, this stuff works really good. You wouldn't, now at first I thought, oh, it's too thin. It's not going to work. But my crepey skin isn't so crepey looking anymore. I mean, my hands are wrinkled, but you know. So I would say this is definitely five snaps. <laughs> the skin cleanser, just as good, does a good job. No, no fragrance, no nothing, uh, and it feels good, and your skin feels just so good. So I'm going to say, heck yeah, heck yeah for these two, absolutely. 
And gentlemen, I would, I would say for guys, especially since you shave your face, because this is good for dry or sensitive skin. Or it says uh, for dry to normal, and then it says sensitive skin. Helps soothe and soften dry skin. It's got avocado oil and essential vitamins. I don't know if you can read that. Okay. It's going to focus on. I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm telling you, I got, <laughs> me and Denise got this at, at Dollar Tree. And then I asked her to go back. Um, when was it? Today's Saturday. I asked her to go back Wednesday and get me three more. <laughs> because, I mean, it's really thin and light. And I'm thinking, well, I've been using it on my, uh, you know, I've been the gentle cleanser on my face. And then I pat it dry. And then I put this on. And then I use it up here uh, because my, you know, my uh, turkey neck, you know, how that goes. But I've been putting it there nice and soft. Turkey neck ain't gonna go away. If I lose more weight, turkey neck is gonna get worse. So whatever. That's that's just life in the old old lady lane. But I'm gonna tell you this, guys. For all the guys, this I would keep. It has no fragrance at all. So you can't say I don't want to use it because it smells foofy because it doesn't smell anything. It has no fragrance at all, and that's good too. And so I just these two. I I I. I just cannot get over. And then it says it hydrates as it cleanses for the skin cleanser. Um, you know, as far as cleaning your skin, this does a great job. I haven't noticed the hydration part, but I haven't noticed it dehydrating it either. You know, drying it out. But I can tell you this right here. This moisturizing lotion, get as many as you can when you get it or when you can get it. Because... This is real good, real, real good. And I don't, I'll tell you, I've got, I've got gold bond heal, ultra healing. I've got crepe corrector. I've got butter lotion. I've got lotions and potions all over the place, but, and I've paid, you know how much that gold bond stuff is. And I got the diabetes uh, thing for your feet and I've got all that. But nothing back there that I've probably collectively paid more than two hundred dollars for over time. Nothing beats this dollar twenty-five right here. Nothing, 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 nothing. And I used that um, shea powder for my legs the other day. And you know, you're not supposed to like. Um, you're not supposed to like use soap right after. You're supposed to just you know, rinse off with cool water or whatever and not use soap. Uh, so, but it kind of, it's a little bit drying. And so I put this on my legs and it was smooth as silk. I'm telling you, get this. If you don't get this, I don't know you. <laughs> so that's two. Here's the other one. Hydrating facial wipes. And it says, compared to Neutrogena Hydro Boost Cleansing Towelettes. Now, the facial, the facial white part, as far as, you know, cleaning your face and stuff like that, great job. I don't so much notice the hydrating factor. Um, this still goes on after I use this. <laughs> But just to clean my face, you know, real quick like or whatever, this is really good. I like that. And let me tell you something. These right here, Yardley washcloths. Disposable washcloths, alcohol-free, enriched with aloe vera, chamomile, and vitamin E. Cleans, moisturizes, soothes, soothes and refreshes the skin. I am telling you. This is a heck yeah. It is a big heck yeah. If you're out and about and you're sweating or you come home and you took a shower in the morning and you just don't want to, I don't know, you just don't feel like taking a shower. So you just want to wash up a little bit before you go to bed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is fantastic. It cleans super good. Let me show you how big these things are. 
and there's 18 in a pack and they're only a dollar and a quarter let me see look at this look how big that is you see how big that is look how big that is and it's nice and it's it's not soapy soppy wet but i don't want to wash my lotion off but i mean it's good it's real good especially if you want to hit the pits before you go to bed <laughs> but i'm telling you okay so it's yardly disposable washcloths and it says 18 large washcloths in here get some get some especially if you have kids or grandkids that are in sports like after a game keep them in the car and they can just wash their face and everything like that and towel it uh are these flush? Uh, no it says do not flush see right there do not flush these don't flush and i don't flush these let's see let me see how to use lift tablet to remove washcloth see you notice the difference in my glasses that's because my other glasses have been sent off for new lenses and i won't have them back for two weeks so i'm working on weaker glasses so bear with me <laughs> go way down here to the bifocal here um unfold washcloth wipe over body repeat uh main to main oh uh reseal the thing to maintain freshness no re oh it says please whoops please do not flush right there do not flush so i would say no these are big big huge look how big they are for crying out loud now, this takes care of my whole upper body for what I need it for. I mean, I don't like to take a full bath with it. But, you know, just to, just to um, freshen up before bed, something like that, this is great. And, like I said, if you had kids or grandkids that are in sports and you're picking them up after a game and they're all funky and they're stinking up your car, here, give them one. <laughs> ah, it kills the funk. It does have a light fragrance, but I wouldn't say it's a male or a female fragrance. It's just, it's just a, uh, it's just a fragrance, um, kind of neutral. I don't know what you want to call it, gender neutral. Um, aloe vera, chamomile, and vitamin E. So, um, and then you just keep away from sunlight or direct heat and store at room temperature. Dispose after each use. And they even have a phone number on here if you um, have a question about these. Who does that anymore? I mean, does Be Pure have a phone number? Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Prop my pillow back up. <laughs> Hold the phone. Let's see. Um, no. Be Pure does not have a phone number. Oh, it is made in Mexico. Yeehaw. You know, but anyway. But Yarley has a phone number to call. Questions or comments? Call toll free. 1-877-879-879. 6999. Okay. So, anyway, so those two wipey things I highly recommend Yardley. And uh, compared to Neutrogena Hydro Boosting Cleansing Towelettes, and there's 25, you can't really see the number here, 25 in here, but they're small. You saw the house is small. Did I show you how small they are? Let's show you how small they are. But you're only supposed to use it. says facial, so you're only using it on your face. Hang on. Right here. This. That's the facial.
That's the yard. That's the yardly. That's the facial. Which one you want to spend $1.25 on? 25 of these or 18 of these? So there's that. We lost two people. Who left? The nerve. And they didn't even like the video before they left. Rude. So rude. Anyway. Then I went to Dollar General. Lost everybody. Okay. Somebody came back. Okay. So then I went to Dollar General. Looking around. And they were having a sale. And this says $3. But it was a brown dot sale. So it was 50% off. And so. Ah, let me take that off. So this is what it says. Home office. Bed. Kitchen table, couch, car. Anywhere you attempt to do work. Expect constant interruptions. <laughs> so I put that up here above my my uh, my desk here. It has a real textured uh, textured thing here. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh yeah. Could be their internet was interrupted. But yeah, so there's that. And there's, there is something else I wanted to show you, but I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, these are the main things, the personal. Oh, I got a Yardley, I got a Yardley roll-on. I got a, you know, I got a Yardley roll-on deodorant. And, you know, it, the, it, it's only about this tall. And, um... It's just a deodorant. It's not like an antiperspirant deodorant. And I used that, and I think it was a mild fragrance, too. You know, chamomile or something like that. And, uh, you know, I don't know what it is about my body, but I got one armpit. One. And I don't care what I do to it. It, is, it gets so funky. <laughs> it gets so funky, so I try the secret pH. I've tried everything. And everything works okay for about a week, and then it quits working, and then, you know, you know how that goes. So I thought, well, I'll give this a try. Let's roll on, so you got to, you know, do this number and let it all dry before you get dressed and stuff. But it's okay. It's okay. It's a use once a day thing. It don't carry over or nothing like that. And I, I clean my pits every day anyway, so, I, you know, don't matter. But, um... If something says it lasts 72 hours, I'm going to test it. <laughs> I ain't found one yet that can beat that pit. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I even told my doctor about it. I said, look, this one over here, fresh as a daisy. This one over here, what the hell? What's going on over here with this pit? I don't know. But um, I don't know. Anyway, but the Yardley deodorant worked good. So if you find it or you see it in, um, you know, in the Dollar Tree, pick it up. Pick it up. So that's enough of me. Let's see. Where's my here's my little hearts to my people? <laughs> Tell me about you. What's going on? And if you haven't yet, please, please thumbs up my video. Please, please thumbs up. Oh, is that right? Lung issues. Well, I do smoke. But uh this ain't an old issue. This 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 pit over here. No, it's this pit. <laughs> that's my right one. That one, that was just always been whatever. And you know, I get a CT scan done every year, and I got to have another one done like two more weeks. And yeah, pulmonary function test, lungs are good, lungs are good. I do have one little lung nodule that's upper, upper right. And I had three, and now I only have one. They say it's environmental because where I used to live was like, there was only like a real thin tree line separating uh, me and a farm. And so every time they would, you know, um, every time they would uh, till up the ground or do the harvest and all that dirt and dust was flying and stuff, I guess those particles do go into your lungs when that's all you got to breathe. I mean, you know, so, you know, two of them's faded away. But uh, first I thought, well, maybe it's a boil. You know how you get a boil under your arm and it might, you know, some kind of 
bacterial infection or something. So I've even put just alcohol, pure alcohol on, on the armpit just to kill the bacteria to see how that worked. And then just slept overnight with like nothing on or whatever. And that works okay. But as soon as you get up and get moving around, it's like, I need something to sell. <laughs> and, I, and you just, it's got to do with what you eat too, I think. So watch that garlic, folks. <laughs> How you doing, Shelly? Tell me how you doing. I want you to know. Um, Marilyn said another Timu package, y'all. Good, Shelly. I'm glad. There's a heart for Shelly. And then, um, so it was all coastal stuff. You know, it kind of goes like with all my office stuff. Necklace, earrings, stuff like that. I kind of sneak peek through it and stuff like that. I want to do, I've got like, that makes like six, six bags of Timu stuff from Maryland. One's a Valentine's Day, the other one's St. Patty's Day. Next one I think is like Easter. One's just like a whatever, and then this one is coastal. So, you know, uh, one of these days we'll do a marathon. <laughs> but like I said in the last video, it's like, I want Patty to do it because, you know, I, all the Valentine's Day stuff. You know, uh, I wanted her to have or access or what have you. But um, Patty's schedule is very unpredictable. You can't plan to say, hey, how you doing today? Or, you know, you want to do this video? But she'll say, we got to do these videos. I'm like, okay, well, what you doing tomorrow? Okay, well, just, just check in and stuff like that. And, um, and so days I feel like, okay, let's do this. Because, you know, when you're doing it like out in the living room or her house or anywhere, you know, at my house in the living room, you don't want to do it in here because it's too cramped up in here for me and her both to be here. So it's got to be done out on like in the living room or something. And uh, so and she has that IV coming out of her chest and she's got that bag with the pump in it that she has to carry around. And, you know, some days she has good days. Some days she just wants to lay down all day. So when she feels good, I'm like, you know, I want to lay down all day. We, it, our schedules just haven't, you know, uh, you know, coordinated. Today, <coughs> we were going to go to what's called Promenade Park. You can Google that, Promenade Park, Fort Wayne, Indiana. We were going to go there today, and my caregiver had bought T-shirts for us to tie-dye. I thought, I want to go do it at the park. You know, that will be cool. And Patty went up to it. And it was a beautiful day. I didn't step outside once. But it was a beautiful day. So we were going to go to a promenade park in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Google it. And they have huge swings for grown-ups. And me and Patty, we want to go swing. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of like a river, riverfront park. And I've not been there, so I don't know how many tables they have. I, you know, I've just seen the outside. And it looks like a lot of steps and patties in a walker or, you know, in what do they call it, a rollator. And that, that'd be, but I'm sure it's ADA compliant. So they've got, you know, ramps or something she could go up or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it because they legally, they have to do that. But um, uh, hello to... The new people here, a little heart for me from coming in. And um, so, but so I called her this morning and it was beautiful. Like I said, like high 65 or 66, sunny all day, just beautiful. And she just couldn't do it. So I'm like, okay, all right, well, we'll find another day to do it and stuff like that. But um, anyway, so coordinating our schedules um, is increasingly difficult let's see Shelly says beautiful day here in Iowa 82 degrees oh you hung your linen on the line oh that smells so good doesn't it I just love that you know me and uh me and Patty were talking the other day two two things we miss most getting old <laughs> and living in a 
we live in a senior community, 50 up, 55 or 50 and up, is that they don't have bathtubs here. They only have showers. And um, we miss uh, we miss being able to take a bath. And the other thing we missed was having our own clothesline and being able to put our sheets out on the line. Those were two things. <laughs> Two things we miss getting old, and uh, other than our friends, of course, that have passed, which, you know, I've had three now, three friends, Kevin Hyatt, Kirk Clark, and then Mayor Henry that have passed away in the last two months. So the older you get, the more your friends kick off and, you know, there, I saw, I saw a thing on YouTube. It was a documentary by, um, who did it? It was either Associated Press or PBS or something like that. Anyway, but it's, it was called Being an Elder Orphan, meaning you're outliving all of your friends and family and you're left with nobody to take care of you or anything like that. I'm scared to death of that, I have to tell you. I'm only one person away of being completely alone, other than my brother, which, you know, my brother, I love him, and I know he loves me, but he is, like, so not interested in doing caretaking or anything that has, makes you feel bummed out. He don't want no part of it. I don't, you know, so, I don't know. But, yeah, so look that up on YouTube. It's called El Elderly Orphans. And um, you'll see, it's like, wow. They had this one guy who was a veteran. I'm a veteran. Um, whose wife had passed away. And he was in that hole where he made too much money to get on Medicaid. But not enough money to be able to afford uh, somebody to come into the house so to help him and Medicare don't pay for that so you all know um, you have to get a Medicaid waiver so anyway um, he was by himself early 90s living you know or I'd say 91 92 I think they said the man sat there and had and ended up calling 911 and ask them to please, I need somebody to bring me some food. If you come here, I'll give you the money. I'll pay you, but please, I need, I got nobody to help me. And I want you to know that the police department and the 911 operators all pitched in, bought that man a house full of food, come in, put it up, the, um, the police department guys came and mowed his yard, took his trash out. They straightened up his house, cleaned it up, everything like that. And now they check in on him like once a week. They take turns checking in on him once a week. Isn't it that Dan said that you got to call 911 and please come. Can you bring me some food? I'll give you the money if you could just go buy it for me. And they stocked him up and they didn't ask him for a dime. But that's sad. That is so sad. You get, you get in that uh, crack or whatever you want to call it. And um, so getting older is sad. <laughs> it's, it, it is sad. And I think I told you guys, um, I had a, I had an EKG or no, you call it. I had an E, uh, Transthoracic echocardiogram. And right here. Can you read that? My ejection fraction is between 55 and 60 percent. That's good. But my diastolic function is abnormal. I have impaired relaxation filling pattern so 
I got a referral to the um, electrophysiologist guy, you know, that puts in pacemakers. I got to have a pacemaker. Because my blood pressure goes down to, what you call it? My heart rate drops down to 40. And my blood pressure, my diastolic one, goes up to like 160 because it's beating so fast because my heart won't pump back up. So I have to have a pacemaker. And so I go see him on the 20 in 10 more days on the on the 23rd and then they'll probably yeah i know it's like you know what see patty patty's got her pacemaker defibrillator and everything like that and i told y'all about that when she was having hers done man after they they had to put hers on the right side because she had a port from her chemo from her you know chemo treatment and she had a port here um, for the chemo to go in, all this, and they had to take the port out. Well, no, it was on, it's mirrored here. This is my right, this is my left, okay? So she had to have her pacemaker put on the, uh, on the right side because she had her infusion on the left side. Anyway, after she had that put in, it was like, okay, so this is like flat against my chest here. Okay, you see? When they put it in, it was like this. Wait a minute. It was like this big sticking out of her skin. About that big. And then over time, it went back down and went back down and went back down. But that took months. So when you first get it, you got this great big mound is sticking out of your body and then you know it, it eventually settles in in the tissue that they put it in but that takes that i think like three months four months you can't raise your arms so high so you don't pull the leads out i know but it was i mean the pacemaker i want to think i'm trying to look around to see if the, i can see anything at least that thick okay so here's a little box it's like this thick and a half it's like that thick and a half more that is how big it is and so they're putting it <laughs> this is my nails they put it in your chest so naturally when the skin goes they stick it in there your skin is going over it so it's sticking out at least that much and a half more, say like that. And so you got your skin stretched over the top of it like this. And, you know, eventually it will, you know, the swelling subsides and everything like that. But, um, man, that's a scary thing to look at. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Patty's such a champion. She goes through all this stuff. I mean, seriously, y'all know what all she's been through. And you know what kind of a joyful person she is and funny. And we do goofy stuff together and everything. But let me tell you, you know she was scared through all of that. Oh, let me throw this one. She was scared through all of that. What else is she going to do? I mean, you, you just got to go. You got to do it, right? So, and I'm thinking, Wow. She's gone through so much and how difficult that must be. And now I'm about to find out at least the pacemaker part of it. Because I want to tell you, I don't know that I'm, I'll be a whiny maggot crying baby. I can tell you that right now. Because I don't have a friend like me. Like, I got nobody to come in here and take care of me. Nobody to wash me up nobody i don't to do my laundry or grab me a coffee cup 24 7. i got somebody three hours a day for four days a week well actually no every other monday and then um tuesday wednesday friday that's what i got it's 11 to 3 and somebody just got added on from 3 to 6 or 3 to 7 or something like that two days so 
But see, Patty had me every day, all night, for years. And but I don't have a friend like me. They're all gone. And my caregivers aren't going to be here. No, I don't get my. I, I I don't know. I have that's up to my doctor's orders. So we'll see. We'll see if they allow it. But uh, now Indiana, they're changing things here. Now I, I think I mentioned. Uh, um, I think I mentioned to Jerome about. Uh, uh, this is my snap. My snap was like 127 a month six months ago. And then, met, you know, uh, everybody got a, what was it, 3.6% or something. I mean, or one point, I don't know. Everybody on Social Security got a little bit of a raise in January. So they took that 127 and then they took the increase and then they took the food stamps away. That brought me down to 77. And then now, and then, like in January, February, they gave us an increase in our utility allowance. So it allowed us, you know, more, about the same. So they jacked it back up to, um, I think it was 92 or something like that. And then, so I had that for like a month or two, about a month. And then they took away the utility allowance for SNAP. Then it went down to 77, and then now it's like uh, this month is 51, next month is 42. I'm like, what? <laughs> but they also, Indiana, changed. I don't know how to explain this. Okay, to get caregiver help like me and Patty have, you have to have be a certain income. You have to be under like $1,400 a month. I know. Wait a minute. Let me go get the letter. I got the letter. Hold on. I always bring the receipts. <laughs> I'll tell you something now. Oh, I get to vote for the next mayor. Okay, so let me find it. Oh, tell me, I what I did. That's not it. Whatever, whatever. Here it is. First, they sent me a letter that said, I failed to cooperate. Failed to provide all required information. Right there. But I did. See, they say I was ineligible. I don't know if you can see it. A little bit ineligible. And then they said... I didn't give them old unearned income for redetermination, which is my housing choice voucher program. Well, I got switched over to a housing choice voucher program that only research every three years. So I did give them the most recent. And then, so after we got that squared away, I uploaded my, I uploaded it to the, portal on 327 then they called me and that's when they said I get $51 $51 in April $42 in May and that got approved and then it says Other action taken, increase in or addition of monthly allowable shelter and or utility costs. That means my responsibility is increased, their responsibility. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, it went down. 
so there's the letter telling you everything how how it all went down so with that i don't know where i was going with all this ha! but um oh we we're talking about how caregiver stuff happens and so if i don't qualify for snap i don't qualify for medicaid either and it's only having medicaid that me and patty get caregivers and it's through a waiver program because medicare does not pay for it don't care how sick you are now they send your butt to a nursing home but they won't give you no care at home so stop voting for republicans y'all because democrats want to make that happen for us and i'm not being snarky i'm being truthful but anyway so the medicaid waiver it's like under fourteen hundred dollars a month i think you have to get to be or under i think it's 13.55 a month i think or 14 something like fourteen hundred dollars a month then you qualify still qualify for medicaid and if you have medicare and medicaid you can get the you can get a waiver from the state um to get caregivers but you have to have a doctor's order that says you need it and how many hours and this well i get i'm eligible for 35 hours a week of caregiving but I don't have it because they don't, they can't staff it. Uh, Patty gets 24 hours a day, seven days a week because she's in stage heart failure. And she don't like it at all, but it has to be done. You know, um, right now with Patty, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's approaching the six month mark for what time she's got left. But she seems strong. As long as she's got that infusion going in, it keeps her heart going and strong. But as time goes on, that medicine is not going to be able to work. And they can't increase it. But anyway, so like if something goes on, if I get my, when I, when I get my pacemaker, I have to go on the 23rd to see about the pacemaker. He's got my EKG or what do you call it? Whatever report I just read to you. <laughs> Cardiac report. Um, he's got that. Um, he's going to probably take a listen. Look at my history. Maybe I'm, Maybe he will say, I'm not quite sick enough yet for one. Which sounds like a typical thing they would say. Because at least, at least with Patty, you know, just like her injection fraction had to be, you know, like 30 before they would do open heart surgery. I'm like, well, that's pretty stupid. When you could have fixed it before it got to 30 and not had to deal with this crap at all, you make her suffer down to that critical of a level before you fix the damn thing. That makes no sense to me at all. I don't know. But anyway, so if they tell me I'm not bad enough yet to get it, okay, fine. But what happens is sometimes I'll stand up and I just like get real dizzy. Matter of fact, you know, all these marks on my arm is me going into a wall and my, my skin being so thin, it just pe peeled back. My skin just peeled back. It's that thin. And like this, yesterday, I was trying to fold up. A, I was changing out my air conditioning filter. And, you know, they got those wires in the back. So I, I usually just push it in and then turn it around and crack it on my knee in the middle to... Yeah, but my arm got caught in the pinch. Whew, man, that hurt. But um, you know, I'm I'm so thin skinned. But um, you know, I don't know. I don't know why that had anything to do with anything. Uh <coughs> somebody help me, where was I? But um, you know, maybe I'm not bad enough to get um a pacemaker yet. We'll find out. Uh, my my other doctor said, yeah. Oh, because I, I can stand up and just be walking and then, bam, I get really dizzy, not knocking to a wall or anything like that. And 
got bruised up pretty bad there a few weeks back, but it was all under my clothes. It was all like on my hip side, so nobody really saw it, and I didn't really, you know, talk about it. But it kind of happened. I talked to my doctor about it, but I didn't like tell the general public, so now I guess you're finding out. But, um, uh, yeah, and my heart rate went down to 40, and my vision gets blurred, and just all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I went to the eye doctor, you know, get my eyes checked like I do, you know. And um, he said that I just had the beginning of cataracts. I mean, not even bad enough to do anything about. But my eyes were really dry. And he said that last time, too. And, uh, yeah, there's some stuff called refresh. You know, eye drops called refresh. And so, I, you know, he says, you know, mindfully try to blink more. I'm like, Okay, <laughs> but, um, you know, if my eyes are dry, blinking ain't going to help because my eyelids are dry too, or my tear ducts are dry, whatever. Anyway, I got, the, I got the drops and I've been using them when I'm feeling, you know, dry and I drink, I drink plenty of fluids. I got a water here. I got a water here just in case I run out, <laughs> you know, I got water everywhere. Right now, I'm drinking coffee, though, or decaf, or whatever you want to call it. But, um, so, he said the combination of early cataracts and dry eyes can make my vision go blurry and see prisms and all. It's called ocular migraines, is what it's called. Um, and he says that that's what it is. And I told him that, you know, about my blood pressure going low and one number being high and the other number being low. He goes, well, blurry vision only happens with high blood pressure. It doesn't happen with low blood pressure. I mean, really? He says, yeah. So, I didn't know that. But anyway, um, so that's that's kind of what where we're at here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, same thing with Patty. It makes her eyes dry. The medicines. Now, I'm only taking, I take Trilogy. Uh, you know. Okay, let's, let's, let's just do a test right here. Is it working? Oh, battery's dead. Figures. Anyway, I got another one in the other room. But um, they're only like a dollar eighty-seven at Timu, y'all. Anyhow, um, what was it? What was I saying? Oh, dry. Yeah, dry eyes. That refresh works. It works real good. Uh, I'm only taking Trilogy for COPD. I take, I have my asthma inhaler. I take nebulizer breathing treatments at night. And then I'm taking, uh, for this esophagus thing, uh, May 23rd is when I go get the first visit to see the guy that's going to do the scope. And my cardiologist had to sign off on that because they're going to put me under anesthesia. So it'd be like twice, once for a pacemaker, once for a scope to see. To, they have to redilate my esophagus. Bunch of shit, man. Excuse, pardon. Bunch of cuckoo caca. <laughs> Bunch of stuff, you know. It's like, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm 66 years old. And I can remember when I was 40, thinking 66 was ancient history, man. It's like, but now that I'm here, it's like, damn, if something's broke, fix it. <laughs> but they said, no, you're too old. The anesthesia. Oh, this or that. I'm like, Fix the damn thing. And I won't need your stupid medicine. If you just fix it, stop giving me medicine to mask it. Just fix the damn thing. And let's move on with it. Oh, afraid you'll go under anesthesia and won't wake up. I said, well, then I'll go out real peaceful one. I won't have a problem in the world. I'll go out just as restful and I'll be okay. But you need to fix it. <laughs> Oh, I know, but tell the doctors that, you know, I know I ain't that old, but somehow or another, they figure after 65, you got one foot in the freaking grave, and they don't want you to go under anesthesia. They won't even give Patty a colonoscopy. I'm like, well, they told me next time I needed one, I'd be 72. Are they going to do it then? Are they just going to let me, oh, if I'm having stomach problems, oh, well, yeah, you know. You might have colon cancer again, or you know. I mean, please. Anyhow, just to recap, 
<laughs> Just to recap my visit, this is a big heck yeah. Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five. This is a big heck yeah. Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five. Yardley wipes, huge, huge washcloths. See, it says washcloths. It don't say wipes. It says washcloths. 18 in the pack. They're huge. If you want to see how huge they are, you'll have to wait till the replay starts and then get back to it. And I'll show you how, how big they are because I ain't going to waste another one because I love it. Okay, so there's that. Oops, timber. And this is compared to Neutrogena Hydro Boost Cleansing Towelettes. The hydrating fa facial wipes at, see, do not flush. Do not flush. And so, um, oh, Dollar Tree's not going out of business. They're just, they're only closing 60 stores na um, nationwide. They're changing their, they're closing family dollars. There's a lot of very, very old family dollar stores around. It's been around since I've been younger. And old dilapidated stores falling apart, bad roofs, you know, all that. They're getting rid of the old ones. And they're, you know, they're that's all they're doing. They say they're closing so many thousands of stores. That's the ancient old ones. That's what the lady told us anyway. Um, they're, they're closing all the real old stores. They just don't have room for the level of stock that they need now because Dollar Tree is introducing over 300 new products over the next few years and they can't hold them. They're not big enough. There's nowhere to put the merchandise. So they're just going to close those stores and the stores they're opening are bigger to accommodate. They're adding the plus sections in some of the Dollar Trees and then they're going to be like a they're capping the price at all of their stuff to $7. I mean, there are some things you will find in there for $7, but their main price point is still going to be $1.25 from what everything I've been reading. And they did, who did it? it was um, Somebody did an um, interview with the CEO of Dollar Tree. And, um, you know, he explained. He explained all that. We're, we're getting... Uh, the family dollar, the family dollar family is um, we're closing down all the very old stores because they're not big enough to hold our stock anymore. And things are just maintenance is more, you know, he explained all that and that the price point for Dollar Tree, you know, where they're going to be bringing in like 300 uh, new products. But it's going to be spread out over a few years, you know, introducing the 300 new products. So what's your opinion on that Fed Reserve might not do an interest increase this year? Um, here's what I think about that. I don't know if you are a news junkie like I am. But when I get my news, I like to get it straight from the source. So if Janet Yellen is giving a report to Congress, I turn on C-SPAN and I watch it live. If the Fed or if Jerome Powell is giving a talk to Congress or a live thing, I turn on C-SPAN and I watch it live. So I can hear what he says. So I don't have to hear what any other news place says he says i can hear it and on c-span you can go back and read the transcript um because janet yellen last month testified to congress they're they're talking about inflation or whatever well she seemed to be of the opinion that inflation wasn't all that important anymore because wages were rising above the rate of inflation so they're getting paid way more than the inflation rate so they can afford it, right? Well, what about us? What about the ones that don't? I'm thinking. So I got on Twitter and I'm like, hey, Janet, <laughs> for you to say inflation's not important anymore, you're forgetting the people back here that don't make those high wages. You're forgetting the people 
in the fast food restaurants and doing the laundry at the nursing homes and the aides and everybody else that don't get that kind of pay. You're forgetting about them. And inflation is very important to them. So why don't you go after the, the corporate greed instead of saying, oh, well, it's okay because everybody's getting paid more. Well, anyway, I don't think he's going to do any interest decrease because inflation tick back up i think 0.01 percent but it's still tick back up and if he doesn't do a decrease then you know corporations are just going to have to learn to lower their damn prices because they're being ridiculous and it has worked somewhat because inflation had gone down and um you know and it was because of all the controls he put in that he wasn't gonna you know so uh he, he said he's not gonna i don't think he's gonna decrease it but if they keep acting a fool and inflation keeps going up from the fed's viewpoint it doesn't matter about if the wages are growing is 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 the um uh, g gdp is gross domestic product with the feds and so that gauges what he says or uses and with Janet Yellen, she uses different metrics. So for the treasury. So I don't know. That's what I think about that. I think I think he's smarter in all of that. And whatever he does so far has worked out for us. And I, you just have to trust the people that know more about it than we do. But I would say stay diligent. And if you're really interested in learning about how all that works and how it gets down to our community level, Watch more C-SPAN. Watch less Fox. <laughs> Get it from the source. Wages have not kept up with inflation. Um, but it is now. It's exceeding it now. Wage, wage growth has exceeded the inflation rate. We're, inflation's at 3.8 right now, as of today anyway. And the wages have increased significantly. You can go to uh, um, Department of Labor, DOL.gov, look at the latest report. And you can also subscribe to their newsletter for the Labor Department to get all those reports sent to you in email the morning they're released. They release it at 8. You get your email at 8.01. tells you what the new jobs report is and um, all of that. And it includes, includes wages. So be informed. <laughs> But I love all of you guys and important um, election this year for your primary and for your general uh, election. And as far as are we better off than we were four years ago? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. We really are. And just because you don't like one candidate over another, you, you, it's, you cannot ignore it. It, the economy is so much better, um, even for us poor folk down here, so much better. So, um, yeah, be sure and vote, register to vote. Our early voting is open now, so um, Monday I'm going to go vote. And then since our mayor died, we have to replace him, and I am a precinct chair. So here's my notice of caucus to replace the mayor. Okay. So got to go do that. And there's how, how do the English say it? And Bob is your uncle. <laughs> so, all right, y'all take care. I'll be back. I, I got some other stuff I want to show you. I got a Dollar Tree haul where I did pick these up. Well, actually, I picked this up. No, wait a minute. I picked this up because they didn't have this. So I got one bottle of this. And then I sent Denise back to the store in the next couple days. And she found this. So I asked her to get me one, um, three more of these. And I'll still just use this. But so um, I got that video. I got to edit it and, and take it up. But uh, I want to say good night to you now. I love you all. 
Mwah. Keep in touch. And if you want to help us out here on the channel and be able to make more shopping trips, there's a link below to be able to do that. Um, pray for your safety and well-being. Till next time. Love you.